Scott in Perry, Ohio. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I'm going to cut the invisible bifocal with transitions gray and Crizal anti glare for your Oakley frame that you sent me. And here's a good teaching moment for everyone out there who wants to send me their own frames to have an invisible bifocal put in. This is his Oakley frame. He sent a little plastic sleeve on there, just like the frame companies do. This is the club face. Of course, it is the Oakley 3102. Hopefully, my camera can pick that up. And the 03 eye size, or color, excuse me, which is the pewter in a 54 eye size. But this is what I have everyone do. I have everyone take a marker, such as a Sharpie, and put a dot on the lens directly in front of the pupil. While you're wearing them, someone else can dot that for you. Or if you look in the mirror, you can do the same thing. That tells me the height. So what I do from there is I measure... To see where to place the invisible bifocal. It's the same thing the optician does. When you go to an optical shop, they put a dot on your lens. Boy, how do they do that? How did they go to school for all those years to learn how to use a magic marker like that? That is something you can do at home. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to, with this being a semi rimless, meaning there's only half a rim, I have to get this prepped a little bit differently so there's no frame to trace. There is my pen. I'm going to put two dots on here one on this side and then one on this side and the reason for that is I want a straight line take that out grab this tool and I have a line on here and I will use this those two dots to make sure that everything is lined up perfectly let me rotate that just a little bit. All right, we're good to go. Press that on there firmly. I'm going to put this into the tracing element of my blocker, but first I want to program the shape into the computer so that years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, I can mail them right to your home, and I'll show you how to put them in where you can do it yourself. I'm going to trace just the right lens this time. Now it's going to ask me the width of the bridge, which is, excuse me, 17. It starts at 18, so I just tap 17, hit the check mark. A little stylus is going to come up, and this time it's going to trace the outside of the lens. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Oakley frame from me, and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Scott, this is his second pair. In fact, his wife got a pair for me this time. We got a his and hers couples pair. And even though he got more options than she did, his were ready first. Why is it that the women keep us waiting? <laughs> Scott, I'm right there with you. I know, <laughs> know what I'm talking about. It takes women a little bit longer to get ready, but that's okay. They look beautiful when they do. So your pupillary distance for your right eye is, th I'm, I'm going to dig myself in a hole today. Uh, fortunately, it's going to be 80 degrees this morning on the way into work. 64 degrees in early February. You got to love that. So I'm going to tap the plus button until we get to 34.5. It's a good, good night to have to sleep in the driveway in my car. So hit that button we're going to raise the optical center height of the vertical decentration to 18 your your eye sits 18 millimeters above the bottom of the frame change the layout screen to this and i've already got your lenses prepped with the three dots it tells me that it's oriented in there perfectly and i take a pen dot that up put an r on there if you guys missed any of that let me recap. <laughs> You're not getting away with that bad joke. You know I gotta slip that in there somehow. Oh wait, I got the stickers on here. So this is a block before and after. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers of which I've got some down here. And I'm gonna stick this one on the first one. Place that on the platform. Do the same thing now for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the... Oop, 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 come on. Stick on that first side. To make the black side sticky on the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. Get everything laid out. That blue crosses the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that and inset. Those two dots are on the same line now. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place a block onto the right lens. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. <laughs> yes, I am still caffeinated. Thank you for asking. The... 
Pupillary distance for your left eye is the same, 34.5, so I don't have to change anything. Same optical center height. Pull the paperweight to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Put that dot at the optical center. These other two dots rotate it so they're sitting level on that line. Hang on, let me get everything centered just right. Bit of a perfectionist, bit of an OCD. Gotta be that way in my profession. If you want to make a career out of this. So this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. But let me show you something a little differently. In order to cut your lenses this time... Oops, now let's do that one. I'm going to show you the, the inner workings of the machine. That's what does the drilling for the such a silhouette or other drill mounts. This wheel that comes out is what puts the safety bevel on the front or the back of the lens. This blade is what's going to cut the groove into your lens so it stays inside this, this string. So that's what's going to go on there. This is going to rotate on there while that is cutting. Let's back up. And we're going to wake the computer up. Job ID number 1336. 1336, so that will now be stored in there. It shows that this is going to be a grooved rimless. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens. I am going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens, a minor one on the front, and I'm going to put a slightly heavier one on the back. Now press that on there firmly. The magnet's going to do its job the second time. It's going to hold it in place into the chuck or say it with me, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Yeah, I know, you're moaning, but you'll be telling that joke tomorrow. So the door closes, the clamp shuts, after I hit the green start button, that is. And then the lens is gonna be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. You can see this is going around tracing that shape. And then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where the halfway mark is to put the bevel into the, where to cut the groove into the lens, that is. So the cutting wheel is starting to spin. The lens is going to drop down onto that. The light you see flickering in the background, that is water there to catch the optical sawdust. Essentially all the lens material that is ground away to make the shape of your final shape of your lens. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now, water will spray onto your lens, Scott, but only for the last 20 seconds to wash away any optical debris that you may see beginning to form on the edge of your lenses. But your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact ballistics-grade lenses. The same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris. It's the same lens material that OSHA requires for wearing safety glasses for any manufacturing job. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection, as well as a premium scratch coating. Now, we know how sensitive your skin is to ultraviolet light. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike lotions, creams, and sprays that have to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, they're in Perry, Ohio. But this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now you have the transitions, which I'll demonstrate later. You also have the Crizal anti-glare coating. Anti-glare is three features in one. The first feature, oops, hang on, hang on, what, my camera's falling apart. The first feature is it reduces glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights and such. It also goes by initials ARC, which stands for anti-reflection coating, so it reduces reflections. When someone's looking at you, they don't see the reflection in your lens. They see, it makes for much better eye contact. Plus, if someone takes a picture with a flash or if you take a selfie, you're less likely to see the reflection of the camera in your lens. The third feature that I like, which is the practical side, it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating because it takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. So because of the time and the expense, Crizal put the industry's hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. So if you notice, your lens is completely flat with some good optical sawdust on the edge of that thing.
So now it's going to get the groove cut into it. That spinning blade is going to go around and slice and slice and slice. And that's how your lens is going to stay into this frame. Now here's a good bit of info. Everyone knows that you've seen the string at the bottom. Did you know you have a corresponding one in the top because that groove goes all the way around the lens. So it's not a flat piece of metal up here. You have a little, it's known as figure eight liner. The same way there's a groove cut into your lens, there's a groove cut into this metal and they slide another piece of figure eight liner. So there's, when I say figure eight, it's almost like two of these, a little snowman. One goes on the inside, one is on the outside. That's the top groove, this is the bottom groove. Now again, it's going to smooth everything out, any rough edges that could have been by the spinning blade. And the reason I do not polish the edge of the lenses, which a lot of people do, unless it is requested, you're paying for the anti-glare coating on the front and the back of the lens to reduce glare. When you have a polished edge, let me see if I can find one like this one and I'll show you in yours. So you paid money to have stop the glare on the front and the back, but now you're letting it in through the side and the top by having it polished. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having an anti-glare coating when you're welcoming, welcoming it in. So if you request it, I don't assume, I don't put it on there unless you ask. But the biggest question is, do you want to see better or look better? Some people say it makes the edge of your lens look better, which you could argue is true, but that's debatable. How many people look at your profile while looking at the front of you? When you polish it, when light comes in, it gives you a ghostly edge, a little skeleton image of your lens that people can see when looking at you. They will not get that in a non-polished lens. So now it's getting the safety bevel on the back of the lens with water spraying on there to wash everything off. So here's another example. My mom spent, she has an old house in the city that I grew up in. She spent all this money putting double-sided insulated windows in to make it more energy efficient. And then she leaves the back door open for the dog to go in and out. For one, being a single woman, my dad died back in 2000. But why would, for security purposes, why would you leave the back door open, mom? Come on, put a dog door in that thing. She said the dog wouldn't go in and out of it. So I'm using my thumb to clean that off. Let's go ahead and get started on the left as I keep talking. Press that in there. Line up the magnet in the Charles, the Chuckster, the Chucky baby. Hit start, the door closes, the clamp shuts. And then the lens again is gonna be traced by the two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the left side of the frame this time. And then measuring where to put the groove and as I keep working on this one but so she paid all this money to insulate the house better and then leave the back door open and I said what why did you spend all that money and not make it energy efficient same thing you're spending all the money to stop the glare on the front and the back why would you invite it in through the side so that is the difference polished in my right hand not polished in the left Again, how many people look at your profile? Of course, your lens is thinner than this one, but that is the difference. So anyone out there watching, you want polished lenses, you've been warned, I'll do it for you, but you're, you are inviting glare onto the lens. I had a truck driver who was telling me he was getting this orange glow in his right lens only. That's because his truck radio, which was orange, the light from that was coming in the side and bothering him. He, it was, he did not get his glasses from me. I said, I know exactly what that is. We fixed it. He will never get polished edges again. Now, for those of you who haven't, it doesn't bother you, fine. We'll keep going. So Scott, in the future, should you ever need new lenses from me for this frame, I'll pull it up on the computer with this. You line, I'll show you how to take the other one out, but you line up the lens in the top of the frame first. It fits into the groove. 
I will mail you this little strap, same thing like packaging you get on package. I fold it in half, I grab the string, tuck it into the outside corner first, and then as I go towards the, let me pull a little bit more on that. When you hear the snap, it snaps right in. Now to get that out, I put my finger on the string and then just slide that right out. Your lens is in there. We're going to come down to my lensometer. Turn the power, the axis wheel to 95. We're going to do what's known as the inspection. Put it in above that black dot where your lens sits. And I am getting minus 2 in the red. You are nearsighted. You need two diopters of far-sided correction. That's where there's a minus sign with your glasses off. Everything is much too large, so your lenses will minify the opposite of magnifying. Your lenses will minify until it's the correct size. Now, once it's the correct size, you have an additional five steps of astigmatism correction. Uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F. So once it's the right size, we have to take away those fuzzy edges. Just like a fine two knob, and we're going to turn that fine two knob to 95. Let's check the second curve on your lens, and we are getting three and a quarter. One tick mark going away from three towards four. That's because you add two like signs together. If someone had borrowed two dollars from you, then they borrowed another dollar twenty-five. They would owe you three twenty-five. Three twenty-five in the red. So again, the astigmatism correction. If you think of it as a fine two knob, a straight line is zero to ninety to one eighty. We're going to turn that fine two knob just past the 90th meridian to 95. The left eye is only to 88. We're going to stop just shy of that. Now you only need six steps. You're on the sixth rung of the ladder for far-sided correction, but you still need the same five steps there. So we end up at minus 275 when we add those together. Now these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180, and it just tells everything to make nice and crisp. You have a spherical curve on your right eye, minus two. You have a second curve, which is even steeper than the first curve at another five steps. And it's how we line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp. If you take your glasses, slide them off your nose and start to rotate a little bit, you can see how things will not be as clear. A spherical lens with no astigmatism, you can rotate and still see pretty much just as well. Now you're moving the optical centers, which is another issue, but um, but it won't be distorted as it will be with uh, when you move your astigmatism around. So you got the, you provided your own frame. This is POF, patient's own frame. You sent me your Oakley 3102. The lenses for your frame for the Essilor Ideal Advance in polycarbonate, not plastic, but polycarbonate is $149.99. The Transitions added $64.99 and the Crizal Anti-Glare is $59.99. At the time of this showing, of this video, I've just got a price increase for Crizal for 2019. I need to adjust that on the website, but I've been a slacker. Scott took advantage of that, but eventually, maybe this weekend, anyone out there watching this and want Crizal, hurry up because as soon as I have a free minute and I can contact my web designer, I will need to increase the prices. I apologize. Everything in life goes up, including my weight. Come on, how do I make that come down? All these New Year's resolutions. I will do anything to lose weight with the exception of two things, diet and exercise. I mean, you gotta draw the line somewhere, don't you? Actually, my New Year's resolution this year was to live another year. Watch, I'll probably fail miserably. So. So you're getting the safety bevel applied to the lens. It's just about done. I will open the door with my mind. I like that, I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. I just got to stare at it for a couple hours, but then I can melt it. So let me go ahead and take the block off. Use my hand-approved drying method. Throw that back in there. Add that sticker to my sticker collection. Quickly run my thumbnail around to get the optical sawdust off the edge of the lens. And hang on, once that's all off, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. So that's why I can't have nice thumbnails. I'm sitting there doing that. Run my thumbnail around the inside bevel to get all of that out. Now, where's your frame? 
So in order to take the lenses out, I turn the frame upside down, grab it by the bridge, place my thumb at the nose, holding on to the other side. I'm going to move my left hand this way while pushing down and to the right with my thumb. And out comes the lens. To put the frame lens in, I rotate it back up, tuck that in at the nose. Then on the outside, make sure it's in the groove. You can grab the strap, start at the outside, grabbing hold of the string. Now I always start at the outside of the lens because generally it rounds off here to make it easier. And as I pull that towards the nasal area, there we go, we are in. Put my finger on the string, slide that out, we are good to go. We're going to come down here to the lensometer and do an inspection of the left lens. Left lens, turn the axis wheel to 88 put it in above that black dot which will be sitting directly in front of your pupil and I am getting minus 150 exactly halfway between 1 and 2 minus 150 six steps of far-sided correction another five steps because everything's in quarter increments check the second curve on the lens and we're at minus 275 one tick mark away from three so your pupillary distance is 34.5 for both your right and left eye for a total of 69 Turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens, and then we hold it up to the left lens. We're getting 69 millimeters. So we're going to check the optical center height, which should be 18. That's going to sit in front of your pupil. So when you look at the bottom of the lens, we're getting 18 millimeters there. Do the same thing for that lens. 18 millimeters. So that has been inspected. I'm now going to get it in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. Set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. Flip that over. When I say wobble, except for mine, I'm wearing the, the Oakley 8132 cross-range switch because I can change my temples out. How about that? There's just a little flip right there, and that will slide off. But let me put that back on. But these are known as pilot temples. So if you have a helmet, either motorcycle or the old, actually for what people in the cockpit, the fighter pilots, they could take their glasses on and off without having to remove their helmet. But I'm going to press that down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly. And they do that neither a temple is askew like that. Check the tension on each spring hinge. Now this is Scott's frame, but I would still make sure that everything is perfect. That nose pad looks like it's been moved over, so I'm going to get that centered. That's known as getting everything into standard alignment. I'm going to go ahead and clean this off. And of course, when you get this in the mail, and there's free shipping of everything I do anywhere in the United States and its territories for our military personnel who are stationed overseas, free shipping for that. But when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance... Let me readjust the camera slowly. My pin fell out. I don't want it to fall off my head. But there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because there's 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. So if that's the case, just stop by your local shop and tell them if it's too loose or too tight. They'll know what to do. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly so they fit well. By the way, I send out a selfie request. I have everyone's picture on the website. Scott, I know your frames pretty well. I'd love to put a face with these, and especially a couple, since uh, your wife's lenses should be coming in today, and I'll get those shipped. Of course, you'll get the tracking numbers and all that when I do pictures of everything I make, both with your lenses clear and with them activated, so you know that the transitions work before they leave my, my lab. But I would love to have a his and hers couple on there. I also include instructions on not only how to care for... Uh, the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I provide, but your Crizal cloth as well and for your case. So those two will last you for years. But let's go ahead and activate your lenses. This is what the first time they look like clear. I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. As you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to start to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Scott, this is important. Pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark in day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks they're exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day or your upholstery from rotting. That's why they don't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. 
They're also temperature sensitive, meaning that they'll get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 85 and above. That I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. Everyone works a little bit better as it cools off. You and your glasses are no different. So that's the first time they've been activated. They'll get darker. Come on, Scott, we talked about that. Don't you remember? <laughs> so... <laughs> Sorry, I have a fan out there who just loves that. He has the same bad taste and humor as I do. So that's it. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. You can, if you have any questions about what I can or can't do, you can email me at the, just the contact button on the website or email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. You can also leave a question or comment here. I'll, I always do my best to answer those. As I keep talking, you can see these lightning. So Scott in Perry, Ohio, I thank you for your repeat business and having your wife get a pair of glasses from me this time that again, I should be able to get those shipped today. She's getting the, she sent me her Flexon memory metal. She put a dot on the lens too. So that's it. Again, thanks for sending me your Oakley 3102 club face, color 03, the pewter in the 54 eye size. And everyone else has got a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.